Let me tell you how fake these dudes are. I do Emmy videos. Why are you doing so many Emmy videos in the road, man? Is that the only character you care about? Why are there so many Emmy videos? The moment I stop doing Emmy videos, where's the Emmy videos, man? Would you hate Emmy? You don't rock with Emmy anymore? You can't win for losing. Anyway, I wanted to get back into the story of Emmy Alter. We have covered this a bit on the channel already, where we kind of glossed over the raw panels when we first found out about his situation with Tyga and how she ended up being misled by Kiara and that forced her and Emiya to collide with each other. That chapter has been translated since then along with a couple of other ones so we're gonna break those down there's a lot to get into and then a little bit that kind of leads up into it and this is the epic remnant manga strictly covering Seraph for those that know this is pretty much FGO 1.5 which is pretty much the in-between of the first set of singularities and the lost belt. So it starts us off with a flashback. We go straight into a bunch of the remaining Seraphix members, that being a separate portion of Caldea that operates the oil rig in the Mariana Trench. But by this point in time, they had lost their main access to the outside world. They couldn't get in contact with them. And so this resulted in a lot of infighting, starvation, people fighting over the last of the resources, and them just hoping that anybody will come. And then the main person you see here is Trepane. She kind of has this sad face and she's going through the exact same thing as them she's the radio operator so she's the one that's making the communication she's the one that sends out the final signal and if you look up you can see mabel mcintosh the og mabel mabel says i told beckman's men about the people that were pushing their work on me and then beckman called us all right away and kicked them out and you can see this is what happened to majority of the rest of the people that they saw as insufficient this is one of the things that they would do to get rid of them. Beckman, Arnold Beckman, who is the secretary that's over the Seraphix crew, we come to find that he's the one that's pulling all the resources. And if anybody disobeyed or try to go against them, the main operation, one of the things that he would do is just send them out to the wolves and leave them to be eaten alive by the defense systems that's in Seraph. And we just see them straight up getting ate by the Black Beast, which is one of many. She says, at first I was relieved, but I quickly got scared and averted my eyes i couldn't stop thinking about how it could have been me the one accused and exiled but it can't be helped right it's what everyone's doing and this is the sick part about it and this kind of just goes to show how quick morals can go out of the window when you put a bunch of people in a pit or you put a bunch of people in a room and you take away the resources all of a sudden you know oh i would never do that to this person and then you have situations like this where you have somebody present the head role with false information just to make the other person look bad so they survive and everybody at this point they're famished they're trying to keep their composure they're trying to keep their mental intact there's some people that are more specialized than others but when it was all said and done out of the 100 people that they had in the crew the last ones that ended up surviving was Trepane who ran the radio Mabel McIntosh which is the girl with the glasses Arnold Beckman who's the secretary and Holly she says I don't want to disappear appear in this place the only time i can forget this fear is when i'm with the therapist she's the only one that listens she's the only one that understands and then it kind of gives some foreshadowing to who that therapist is and you already know that is of course kiara session which is a character that was originally introduced in fate extra ccc but in the fgo timelines she was an actual therapist and she did really work for the church she was actually called there when when everything started to go amiss with the crew, when people started to lose it, they would go to the church and consult her as a method to calm themselves down. And speaking of the church, we go back into the present where we have Mabel and we have Beckman and she's trying to console Beckman. She's trying to calm him down. She says, calm down, Arnold. Something must have happened. After I treated him nicely because he was the master of Caldea, what's with that attitude? I'm the guy in charge here, me, the director, the vice director, director the doctors they're all dead i made sure of that and you can see that this man is losing it there's literally nobody else in the church at this point by the way so he's pretty much just screaming into the air at nothing but he's furious at Ritsuka because what he had going on at this point he's in the trash dump of the seraph labyrinth and he's stuck there because emia alter 
was supposed to pull them back out and he ended up cutting the cable and leaving him there. The reason that Ritsuka went in the first place is that he wanted to make sure that Mel was okay. But again, as I said earlier, Beckman is still a part of the original Caldea. So he's looking at it from a position where even though you're not directly under me, you should still abide by my order. You're just some new guy. And what he means by how he made sure everybody else was gone is that when the infighting started, a lot of the members ended up getting set up and they were just one of many all the people that he mentioned you take out the leaders there's nobody to follow you take out the doctors there's no way to keep people sane because that's their specialty so then everybody is forced to come back to him and it kind of just stands as a way to weed everybody out anybody that can't handle it and he says of course i never had to get my hands dirty i had the grunts do the work that was needed and this is the cleaner this is the guy that he would send people to if they ended up causing any disruption didn't matter if they were set up if they were framed if he had any suspicion any reason to actually put them down he would give them to this guy and the cleaner would take them out personally or as we saw earlier they would just get fed to the defense systems that are in Sarah because everybody here is in the command room this is one of the only safe places but if you go outside if you're thrown out into the actual labyrinth no way to actually protect yourself you're finished and he says but that doesn't mean it was easy you have any idea all of the hard work i put into controlling this hell yes arnold i know you've worked really hard by taking control over violence drugs and sex i was able to gain authority in the midst of chaos i work hard so everyone else could live at ease when I mean, this is all the medicine that you can see that he raided from the doctors after they were taking out the picture there was nothing stopping him from just housing this himself the medicines i seized from the doctors were quite helpful medicine and painkillers can work as drugs depending on how you use them they work nicely as rewards well i ended up rewarding holly with too much morphine it's a shame that he gave himself an overdose doing something that he wasn't used to in a sense this was proof of how much he had helped me i'm sure he was smiling as he went up to heaven and this is holly another one of the last Last members that I mentioned earlier he practically convinced this man to OD on morphine and he ended up throwing himself into a locker and that's how he met his end every person that was a threat for order was removed by execution even then we were close to falling off the edge more than once but everything went well sometimes I get afraid of my own talent and you can see just all the resources that this man has stocked up just from taking it all for himself I don't know what happened with that radio girl but she did her job in the end and now after all this time Time, victory is at last within my reach and it kind of goes into this dream of his this is the idea that he envisions of himself in his mind the hero that survived this terrible crisis welcome and admired by everyone at Caldea a brilliant career path that leads to recognition as candidate to director yes he did all of this in order to secure a come-up story so he could be the director at Caldea and you know this this was after Roman passed, so I'm sure the idea seemed more than feasible to him in his mind. Yes, Arnold Beckman, director of Caldea. Who knew such a talented man was hiding among that staff at Seraphix? And when I tell you this man looks crazy in this picture, like, look at this. <laughs> Why does he look like this? What is with this smirk? It's almost like he's getting high at just the thought of himself being in this position. Disgusting. You can even see Mabel da vinci and mash in the background which is hilarious because for one he hasn't formally met da vinci and mash in person yet somehow he still managed to include them in his vision because he wanted to look good that much but right at the end that damn brat ruined everything how long does he intend to keep making fun of me and there he's talking about ritsuka not respecting his so-called authority even though we're technically the ones that came down to save them funny how that works the only one who's worth a damn around here is me fujimaro should jump at the chance to follow my orders you got that mabel now nah, jumping at the chance is kind of crazy so not only should ritsuka be following his orders but he should be grateful just to grovel at his feet 
I know you lying. That's right, Arnold. Now, would you please try to calm down? And you can see Mabel is playing into this character that he has because she doesn't want to get clipped. I mean, you're at the end of the road. There's nothing else you can do to survive, but try to, you know, keep this person satiated. Unless it's something that's completely out of line, she's really just doing what she can. That's right. You're the one who listens. You're the only one I can trust. Let's find a way to get out of here together you can see him hug her because she's the main one that's entertaining all of this so he can't help but be a big fan of that she's pretty much playing into that idea of him being director before he even actually officiates the role ah i can't wait to embrace you again when we can get to the proper bed and it's wild that he says that because that just spins right back into that boundary of things that are out of line so he outright is admitting that he's fucking her now that he can't actually see her face she is not down with any of this so he's not just done this a few times but he's doing it constantly because you know seraphix they're underwater with nobody else around him like who's stopping him they're just waiting for an opportunity to get into contact with caldea or anybody that can come out to come get them this is some sick work but in order to get there we have to deal with this brat standing in our way time to stop being polite and get our our hands dirty and he's already mentioned before that all of the things that he's carried out up until this point wasn't of any of his doing he just made everybody else do it whatever that may be but now Ritsuka is at the point of pushing him over the edge it's crazy how you let a person that really just came in at this point get you riled up like this all for the sake of a position the whole reason that you have that position is to protect the people that's the only reason worthy of you being in that position in the first place but if you're so gung-ho about bringing one of your own members down then what does that say about you really then the next panel we're running out of time we have what less than four minutes left mabel i need to find a way to get fujimaro in line and make him follow orders and the thing about this chapter is that the moment that the process happened and the whole reason that all of this is going down is because of the demon god zephyr he's the one that created the single Singularity because he's trying to fully come back to life again after what happened with Goetia at the Temple of Time. He escaped, changed Seraphix, which is this oil rig that they're at right now, into Seraph. But in the chapter itself, the time is different from what the time is in the real world. Basically, 15 minutes in the real world is one day in Seraph. And this is what caused a lot of the mayhem that was going on because that would mean that it would take several decades for them to to get help in real time and in the corner here we got a gun i'm sure you all know who that is maybe i could get some poison from the sick bay but that would mean returning to the command room alone and if you look at the next panel we got our boy emia alter back in the cut and the reason i had to preface all that before i got back into emia himself is because like i said there's a lot going on and even if you already knew you just might need it to recap but that's how emia comes back into the the picture remember i said he's the one that had the cable he dropped him down into the trash dump so Rasuka could go get meltrelis but what he ends up doing is coming back to the church because something was telling him that things weren't right about these so-called members if he had a partner i could have taken them hostage but it looks like this is a solo mission what happened here what a mess did you decide to start cleaning pretty impressive if you did all of this on your own so this speaks to a lot of things first of all it speaks to emia's awareness it shows that he's observant he pays attention notice the first thing he did when he walked in the church he's peeping game at what's different like before he even says anything to Begman, he's making this joke about how everything is so clean. When in the earlier panels, you can see that the church is trashed. And the only thing that's been going on in between that time is Beckman raging. He says, the black archer, you came back. You can kind of see the IV on his back. This is one of the only panels we can really get a good look at it. And he tells him, yeah, I'm by myself. Who am I supposed to be with? Beckman tells him, well, never mind 
done that, you've got great timing. I need you to get to the command room right away. The sick bay is in an office right next to it. In a cabinet in there, you'll find a bottle of type 8 B toxin. So this speaks a lot to his nature because just two minutes ago, he was just saying how he has to get his own hands dirty. And then the moment that he finds somebody else he can use, he tries to throw the order off on Emya, as if to say that he's practically incapable of doing anything on his own, which is pretty sad to be honest. But even more than that, he's essentially asking Emya to go get some poison. And the reason being is that he's planning on using this on Ritsuka. That way Ritsuka doesn't discover the truth about what's going on and he can somehow still reap all the credit. Now, as I make this, we're coming off the back of LB6. So it's funny seeing this now in hindsight because we already know that Ritsuka has a resistance to poison. And in the next panel, we see Emiya's response to these orders. And that response is with a bullet straight through his dome piece into the wall and he kills him. This man Emiya Alter doesn't give a fuck, not one. He says, I need you to, he couldn't even get the sentence off before he blasted him into the wall. Bump your knees. I didn't ask you all that. This is the inkling that Emiya was talking about and this is the reason why he came back. He knew that Beckman was up to no good. So he got rid of him. And you can see Mabel just in shock. I mean, he literally just pieced this man up. Blew his whole top off. Whole head just splattered on the wall. This is crazy. And before Mabel even had a chance to be surprised, he blicked her too. Did the same thing to Mabel that he did to Beckman. One shot a piece from each of his guns, both of them out without flaw he doesn't have time for any talking now emmy alter has said before already that he's not really into negotiation this shouldn't come as a surprise i've said it before this man is brutal cold cut and straight to the point that's pretty much the arc of this character he may be willing to bargain with something if it's beneficial to him but he won't hesitate to end a situation like this we got a close-up of his pistol you can still see the smoke coming off of it and he says i'm sorry beckman I'm in a bit of a hurry. You can keep your yammering in hell. That's all the Seraphic staff dead. Now the Animosphere experiment can never be repeated. So this experiment that he's talking about is referring to the one that Marsberry started when he was still alive. After he made his wish to get all the money after he won the Grail War with Solomon, one of the things he did was buy the oil rig Seraphix. But the flip side to Seraphix was that it was never just an oil rig. They they would use failed candidates and send them down to the seabed to harvest magical energy and resources. But their bodies were kept in limbo while they were doing this. And they had no idea what was happening until they were already down there. And the reason that he did this in part was to create Caldeus itself. Caldeus being the globe that shows us the entirety of Earth. He had put these masters in the coffins and used their magic circuits to connect with the ley lines of the planet at its lowest level. That was the experiment. They would be used to power Caldeus. Though to everybody else, it's a top secret project. Even the people at the tower don't know about it. Part of the people in the Seraphix crew didn't know about it. It was only specific mages that had access to the planetarium itself. And as a counter guardian and just a part of his intuition, Emiya knew that Beckman and Mabel were people that he needed to get rid of. We got another picture of Trepane. He says, we haven't verified the status of the radio operator or the therapist, but BB never said anything about them. They must be dead. Just going back to him having those internal thoughts and really thinking it through process of elimination. If somebody is always talking about this certain thing and then they all of a sudden just just stop talking about it they either stop going to that place or they stop dealing with that person or that thing all that's left to do is destroy the planetarium i don't care about their investigation into what's in there and whatever happened to this place so you can see that he's very fixated on the goal even though he was aware of the changes that happened in the church because he's already been there before he's not going to go out his way to find out why beckman was on what he was on he just knows that if he saw 
cause the problem right now, then everything that's going on here from before more than likely will be answered anyway. And then you have this voice that comes in and says, you've always been this way, haven't you? And then Emiya turns around and he shoots again at the already dead corpses. Now, mind you, they're gone. He peeled them off. So essentially he's shooting at nothing. Just like back then, you'll kill anyone standing between you and your goal. And you can tell that he's sensitive to the voice that he's hearing because, okay, let's be honest. If anybody starts hearing a voice, they're going to start freaking out. But just from his alertness that he had before, he's engaging what he's hearing like he's heard it before. Now, remember everything that I said about Beckman up until this point in time. Yes, that was the real Beckman. Yes, he really wanted to be director, but everything that he was doing was thanks to the influence of Kiara on his character. And the same thing that goes for a lot of people that was left. The cleaner, people that turn against each other, everybody that dealt with her, all of them. It's a lot how like Angra used Sakura's hatred from being locked up, turned that into fuel to make the shadow cause chaos throughout the city. Beckman without this influence would have never done those things otherwise because it pulls out the worst in you. And so it forced him to use all of these underhanded tactics because his character wanted to be director. Same thing with Mabel. That was the real Mabel that we saw at the beginning in the flashback, but the Mabel that Emiya Alter took out is actually Kiar taking the form of Mabel because as a person that's over the entire thing, she has access to doing that. She can perfectly recreate her. That's why Emiya Alter took them both down. And that's why as soon as Mabel went down, Kiara started to show up immediately after. So in the next panel, everything is starting to be swallowed up and he can't see anything but darkness. He doesn't know what's going on, but he's panicking. This presence, this spirit origin pattern. So he knows what this is. You haven't forgotten gotten me already have you or was that scrapped away when you became a heroic spirit he looks over to the side he can see the emblem off into the distance and then the light kind of giving more form to it a new religion appeared in a certain country it made believers out of all sorts of people all over the world scientists politicians people in power and this takes us back into that flashback that we covered in the other video when we were lacking the translations. So this is what was going down. A movement of people lacking a desire for profit or political opinion, seeking righteous salvation. No thought or possession, you might say, wounded souls and talented loners, all unable to find their own place in the world. They had talent and the genius to save the whole world. Although many of the world power saw them with nothing but suspicion so getting back into this flashback this is the main headquarters for the shingon tachikawa school which is the same school where kiara ended up turning the people that followed her into said sex cult and this is actually our first time seeing this through the fgo timelines because back when it was first introduced in ccc you know ccc was focused on telling the story of the game itself so there weren't many depictions of what was going on with her story it was a lot of it just being said or in the materials outright so this gives life to a lot of that and where that came from providing drugs to treat incurable diseases that has spread around the world innovative research that took medical care to a new level advanced remote therapy was made available to anyone around the world it was a noble organization where everyone came together to overcome prejudice and discrimination nation for the sake of salvation so as it's framed to us the organization is doing a lot for anybody that decides to be a part of it it's curing physical illness helping mental illness and even bringing unity among the people just hearing about it in writing seems like a dream come true we flash back to Emiya. We see the tentacles in the background still swinging around him. And it seems like he's in pain just to think about all of this that's happening. Have to be some type of mental attack that's kind of forcing him to answer maybe the deepest parts of his character that he doesn't want to look at. There was nothing evil about the group though. And you can see all the monks here together. In fact, there was not an evil soul to be found among them. All of them lined up giving praise with one sole exception that is the woman who founded it. And that person, of course, we know is Kiara. And you can literally see Kiara 
in the panel having sex with the monk like she's literally sitting on top of the monk riding him and everybody is just standing around her giving praise this is the name of kiara's game this is what her being a beast is founded upon her love for humanity is through sex it's through the flesh we see emia pull up all of the monks are still there right in front of him he says it's you you bastard he goes off he loses it and he's blasting all of these monks in the back they don't even know what's going on he didn't give them any chance to respond any chance to explain themselves he decided they're in a way and he's just shooting them right off the bat the voice says you killed them and we can see this is where he has his coat on gun in one hand sword in the other and i think that's more symbolic than anything because at this point in time he's still technically shiro so him having both of the weapons more so represents this is his transitionary phase between the two you killed everyone in that building in order to get to me so not only is he shooting but he's also slicing them in half too whoever decided to get in the way of course they wouldn't allow me to be murdered and the very idea that you have this guy coming out of nowhere trying to take their salvation away from them now they're all trying to jump shiro so they pull out their weapons oh you thought just because we were monks we didn't have that on us too we are really about that man these dudes got pistols rifles bulletproof vests what type of monks are these i didn't heard about buddhist warrior monks but this is different this is different i can't lie to you killing you was the only way they could be sure not to lose me so these guys don't even mind that they're being killed themselves they're just mad that Shiro is going for Kiar so them being another sacrifice doesn't mean anything to them as long as it's going towards saving her they hold her in that high of regard and so you see him pull out his pistol back and I love this shots with him wearing his coat and so you crush them all and he's continuing to blow everybody down he doesn't care they want to go back at him we can go full force because again the idea for emia in general is to save the greater portion but this is more so in alignment to a kiritsugu route because it's way more destructive the most destructive out of all of them you crush them like they were ants and then he finally takes his hood off and we get to see that shiro that has been going through that stage and you have to wonder why don't we have this as a costume for Emia Alter? Tight Moon, what are you doing? That's free pulls. How many people that refuse to pull Emmy Alter would automatically pull if they seen this costume? Just leaving money on the table. Such a shame. Y'all so focused on making the waifus when all the bread is right here. Bro, literally on the site that I'm reading this on, they're in the comments saying, why isn't this an Emmy skin? I can't make this up. So that's the end of that chapter. And look at this. We got some color panels. Yo, these guys really got this. Who is your supplier? And why are y'all booted up like this? I guess it's to protect Kiar, but for them to already have this, for them to already be on such level of defense that y'all got bulletproof vests and pistols, she must have had quite a few enemies. I'm gonna tell you now, don't let him get close to the priestess. You see him turn around with that look. I don't think you guys wanna do this. And this is that same outfit color. This is also the same outfit that he had an extra prior to him actually becoming a spirit. And you can see that he still rocking the shroud even though he's not wearing it still has that front body armor of emia but the shroud itself is the only thing that's red so this shroud was supposedly given to him by cl from the church cl from Tsukihime. they met up prior to this situation and that's the reason that he has this but it's before he made the transition to wearing the red top that we see him in during the original stay night he just has half of it on this could also be seen as symbolic that he's kind of halfway between between those beliefs that he had in stay night they still exist but he's not fully committing to it which is why it's not covering the entirety of his body again you have him cocking back pistol in one hand sword in the other i'm gonna be honest i'm gonna be the one to say it this looks better than his regular fit there i said it it really does the blackout is pimping if i do say so myself then you have an actual statue of kiara this is sickening 
and after you massacred the cult you even killed me though it doesn't actually show this but this is what this entire mental attack is alluding to and you can see it kind of cut to the eyes of the statue this is actually hilarious you did it right kill me i mean and he shoots the statue oh i ended you all right your mortal life at least and this is definitely transition because you can tell even though he's devoted to the mission it's taking a lot out of him i mean in his face it seems like he doesn't even want to do it but in his mind he has to that's right but you couldn't kill my essence maybe if i had existed in your world yes i'm sure i'd have gladly leaped off of that roof to tell the truth though more than anything i was bored your action as a hero of justice were quite amusing we beg you don't do this without the head priestess the world will perish so all these people that serve under kiara are literally pleading to shiro not to take her away from them because with all the things that are going on in the front of the cult it makes for a really good compromise for them but Shiro, on the other hand, sees the bigger picture. And so he takes all of these people down too anyway. And you can see them all lying at the floor and then all the other monks are surrounding him and he's getting ready to go through them also. You're such a funny, stupid man. The world was being worn down by an incurable disease. By the way, this is the same incurable disease from the timelines of Extra where people were trying to find a way to survive and the world was literally being crazy nobody knew what to do and Kiara was one of the first people to pop out with the solution new hope for the incurable disease new treatment to be approved by the Ministry of Health Labor and Welfare and then the cult suddenly appeared and immediately brought a cure for the disease I've been watching as the number of people everywhere that accept the cult and that become believers increases little by little I've seen what hides behind the scenes of that perfect miraculous salvation of theirs and again you can see it pains Cheryl more than anything to take that away from them here we have a guy it looks like he's on the ventilator lying into the backside an entire infirmary all of the beds are full all of these people just trying to figure out a way and then the next panel the heartbreak you have Tyga and this came as a huge surprise to pretty much everybody I'm sure because up until this point in time the story never implied Tyga to be involved that was something that was completely new but in this timeline whatever old timeline that Emiya Alter comes from she ends up being a part of this it says I just learned something interesting it seems that an acquaintance of yours was part of the cult even though she was working with such dedication for the sake of salvation why did you have to get in the way she doesn't believe in the faith but her son was sick with the disease so she had no choice but to rely on the oil Order. That's another thing that came completely out of the sky. Tyga having a son. Now, of course, this is something that must have happened after the events of Stay Night because we would have known otherwise. But it leads you to ask a lot of questions. When did this happen? Why did it happen? Do we have to bring back Mori? Whose baby is that? Because they've never shown us Tyga having affection on that level with anyone outside the normal cast. So this is really huge, though many people may not think about it that way. Beyond just the Emya Alta scenario, that's also a lot of character development for Tyga. And she was a part of the core story to begin with. And it says that's all there is to it. The deeper I go against the cult, the more my doubts become clear. This world is far from normal. The world should know the truth about the cult and now you see that he switched off his main weapons for his sniper rifle and everything here is operating on a more advanced level however i underestimated the head priestess the cult's poison is invisible and it displays no signs of danger it has seeped so deeply into the world that it cannot be removed key figures of the ruling class all over the globe are now secretly members of the cult it impatiently awaits as it builds up the momentum to swallow all of the world's beliefs. So not only were a lot of people falling into the cult, but it had a lot of advocates and benefactors that were putting in on the cause, practically saying this cult was about to become the new world order, where it would get to a point where everybody would rely on it and nobody would question it. And with the incurable disease going around, how could they? The cult will certainly bring out salvation to humanity 
humanity a salvation that is worse than any hell and then we see a picture of tiger here standing at the bedside i will stop it before everything withers away my only target is the head priestess and then you can kind of see kiara here blackened out cheryl with his sniper once again and we've already seen that before everybody praising her even now there's still time the faithful don't have the power to poison the world by themselves but the more forceful my actions are the fiercer their will to protect their savior grows until finally that resistance leads to its predictable conclusion and this is once again that panel that just rips your heart out and throws it out the window and it's taiga in tears holding a gun just like the monks trying to protect the future of her son and in order to do that she has to protect kiara she has to protect the cult though you can tell even by her tears she really doesn't want to and this goes into the next chapter and then you have shiro holding up his weapon back in response so you have to imagine there's a lot going on right now taiga essentially being someone that raised shiro and then taiga being on the other end of that spectrum vice versa but ultimately they've known each other for as long as they can remember and now they're both holding each other at gunpoint that's intense we got another panel again she's still in tears but this time she has her head covered still committing to the cause i should have known this would happen and now that shiro is realizing who it actually is he's starting to freak out before he became emia his mind broke before anything else certainly you can see the creak on the gun she is attempting to pull back the shot to imply that she actually was gonna do it we flip back over to shiro and he's already let one go tiger's eyes go wide she drops the gun out of her hand and shiro has to face the reality of what he just did and then we see again shiro is distraught looking at her dead body we flash back to her in the past again taiga is always bringing this happy-go-lucky energy how can you not feel horrible this is like getting rid of the kindest person ever feels bad man next panel we see i'm sorry in the background and another close-up of taiga all right man i think this is enough can we stop showing tiger's body please we've seen enough again shiro he is stuck closes his eyes he can't really take it anymore so this is the story of your world the foolish justice and retribution you tried so hard to forget he's here and then you have all the other monks that have finally caught back up to shiro stop resisting those days we spent playing together stay away from the priestess stay away from the priestess all of them are in chant together they're not letting him do anything to kiara period and your determination against me that led to the slaughter of my believers and to the destruction of everything that was precious to you and we switch back to emia altar i really like the transitions that they're doing here this is one of those things that should be animated as heart-wrenching as it is it really brings everything full circle and i always like like the Seraph chapter, I think it's one of the best chapters that we have just because of the nature of how many things get addressed. But this goes way beyond what we had originally because all of this wasn't in extra. All of this wasn't in the chapter itself at least depiction wise and it really shows you a lot and the everything that was precious to you line kind of just goes back into that theory of this actually being mind of steel shiro now if taiga was everything that was precious to shiro right that would mean that there was nothing else in the world for him left and if you look at mind of steel shiro he kind of sacrificed everything else at that point which in turn would make taiga the only thing precious to him it kind of just weaves back into that narrative perfectly and you can kind of see kiara starting to weave a bunch of these palms they look more so like cybernetic buddhist palms and they're getting all over his body and you can tell this mental pollution that she's doing to him is tormenting him i don't think most people would would even be able to get out of this and then the buddhist palms kind of revert back to all of the monks dogpiling on shiro back when he was still alive now now i can't have you running wild right 
be careful you don't know how easily your limbs could get torn off so now the attacks at least in the present time are switching from mental more so to physical cheryl starts to rip all of these guys off of him he gets to shooting at everybody around him you have to wonder though why would the monks dogpile them if they have guns wouldn't they all just shoot him at once anime logic right gotta be there is no chance of you escaping from me you might try but it'll all be for nothing and this ladies and gentlemen is why most people hate kiara i love her though but you can understand why she is the main reason that threw shiro into mental agony and literally caused him to go alter well of course he has to take most of that blame himself he did decide to take that route but she definitely didn't help i will say that then we go off into another chapter we start the chapter off with Shiro's bloodstained sword. This is Bakia in particular. You slaughter innocent people. That's the sin whose guilt you cannot escape. You hardly needed the help of a wicked woman like me. You'd have found your way to hell sooner or later. And this kind of just goes back into what I was saying before. This is Shiro's choice. All of his paths of righteousness ends to him being some form of an emia. If he decides to take it to this level. And he usually does. So as I always say, you get what you came for. And this pretty much goes into his background where he was supposed to be executed. You know, the original Emiya, he fought in a war and the people that he helped ended up turning against him. And that's how he got executed the first time. In the story of Extra, he had his friends turn on him and they saw the path that he was going down. So they handed him over to the authorities and that's how Nameless got executed. And then here we get into what happened to alter the unforgivable work of the unforgivable person who cannot forgive evil that is a mouthful and once again you see shiro at those moments but right here we have a twist i thought this was interesting it says according to the official records after carrying out your selfish justice for some time you were executed in truth however you became a puppet of the government the hero of the public and you can see two guys wearing suits right next to them kind of pushing that government official agenda and you can kind of see the cuffs falling off of him and they're taking him back to their facility wherever that may be so to everybody else in this timeline he was supposed to be executed but he ended up actually working as a real vigilante tight moon batman for real and it also stands to reason why if you've seen his other outfit why emia is wearing the suit instead of something more casual is because the entire time he had been working for the government anyway that's his real backstory so that makes a lot more sense now we have him going over the documentation of his most recent mission even a photo of taiga that he's looking over himself and he can't help but hate himself for it so he loves the idea of making the world a better place but it's at the cost of him hating himself in return and now that he's taken out taiga i know he especially hates himself now more than ever it wasn't taking out kiara it wasn't taking out the monks it was definitely taking out taiga you can't take that back an enforcer of the government's will faithfully carrying out his assigned duties and if you notice this picture the transition he looks a lot more like Emiya, the actual Emiya himself. So now we've hit the Emiya marker, but in this version, he continued to push the threshold. Then comes a tedious repetition of endless days filled with nothingness and oblivion. You forgot what you wanted to protect, became a machine that only cared for efficiency and results. You forgot the justice you wanted to become, a heartless, banal puppet wandering a doomed world. And this is the full transition you can see he's at a camp bodies laying all over the ground of course this has to be his doing but instead of having a gun and a sword he now has both of his guns and in the next panel you'll see it's kind of hard to tell but it's smeared out but there's lines in his arm to represent that magic circuitry burning his skin and then the sword itself is melting and to the left you'll see what comes from that it is the exact moment that he turned his Kansho and Bakia into guns. So that's real dope. 
I complained about this quite a few times before this came out. I'm like, yo, where is the story for Emya Alter? You told us about it, we heard about it, but we haven't seen it. This is what we need. A heart of steel is not something a human should have. And then we switch back into the present, the him chilling with his gun. He's kind of had his full transition by this point, gotten rid of the hood. He just kept the coat, cut all of his hair off, did some designs on the side, and he also got rid of his body armor. And here you can see that formal outfit that I was talking about before that we saw in the CE. Even if you're recognized as a living legend who always completes every mission, there is nothing that can fill the hole where your heart used to be. That's a fact. And you can see he literally just blasted this man's top off. And the big difference here is that at a point where it used to bother him, like in the panels with Shiro, and it just eating him alive, like this man didn't even bat an eye. Like he's looking these people in the face and doing it, and it doesn't even bother him. Too far gone. In the end, while carrying out a mission even a rookie could have handled, you simply disappeared. That was your past, and you can see he's being completely tangled. If nothing else, at least you'll have a chance to reach enlightenment when I consume you. One last thing about the suspicions you had about the me in your world, what led someone like you to go so far and twist and betray your own ideals in order to be able to kill me? Yes. You had to kill me. You had no choice but to kill me. And you can kind of see the light highlighting Kiara's body. He knew that something bad was going to become of that. And that was Kiara was going to turn into a beast. He didn't know that for certain at the time, but he knew something wasn't right. And that's kind of what she's regurgitating back to him at this point. When Fate Extra and FGO show us that she does become a beast when she finally has the right incentive. Now the regular Kiara, she's an actual real therapist. Like she really does her job and she actually works for the church wholeheartedly. She really was soothing the people at Seraphix. But when Zephyr showed up and started to pull the memories from the moon cell and flood them into that FGO Kiara, she started to literally turn into her other self. Self, which would be that person that would lead that cult that would become a beast they all started to follow her and worship her in the same way as the people from the school that we saw prior you and you alone in that world had realized what i would eventually become there still is some parts to come back around concerning emia alter like him finishing kiara off but i just wanted to give the general idea of emia alter's backstory all in one video just in case anybody was wondering i know we kind of did a more concise version the last time i don't think that video went past 10 minutes if he picks up the weapons this man cannot catch a break it's almost a universal constant at this point the only time where he does catch a break is in the versions of him that doesn't fight there's no him fighting and he catches a break Ilya vs shiro emya gohan shiro ataraxia shiro they're chilling but if he even thinks about fighting it's over with 